Hey there, back again for another tip. And this time I want to kind of show you how to use your stash of art brushes and use them to create and extend your stash in maybe some artsy papers of that. And this is something that a lot of people um, either are not aware of or they don't even think of. So I thought I would go through this and hopefully teach you something a little new. I'm going to be using Green Eyed Lady's texture brushes. Um, Make Your Mark Texture Brushes, I believe the name has been changed now, but I'll give you a link to this in the bottom. And I'm also going to use one of my kits, Artsy Play 01. I always try to put, you know, a plainer cardstock or more of a monotone cardstock in my kits. And I think this is going to show you why I do that and how versatile the Artsy Papers can be with the uh, plain cardstock papers. So the first thing I want to show you is I've brought a couple of the more artsy papers in here and I'll just unhide them to show you they're underneath. And here's the there's the trick. You go to edit define pattern with that top one on here and we're going to just give it a any name you could give it any kind of name or not even name it, but I'm going to name it what the kit paper is and it's from my artsy play 01. So I'm going to copy that for my next one. So I created a pattern with that. I'm going to turn that off, go to the next layer, edit, define pattern, and I'm just going to paste in that name here again. And I'm going to name it after the paper. And this one is uh, paper number four. And then you just push OK. Turn that one off, go to my next one, and I'm going to edit and define pattern one more time paste that in and this is paper number eight so I'm going to give it that name. And a side note, I personally would also save these patterns to a pattern set along with this kit, but that's for another video. Pretty nifty. Now I don't need these anymore so I can just select them all and delete them out of my layout. Now as you can see I have a pretty plain background. I've pulled some elements in here and I'm not sure I'm going to use them or not yet. And then I'm going to go all the way down to my bottom background layer here. And you can see I've clipped um, some photos in here too. And I'm going to give them shadows just while I'm here. Okay, now I'm going to go all the way to my bottom. Now I'm going to take my brush tool. And I've already loaded up um, Vicky's brushes in here. So I'm going to find one that has kind of an artsy um, to it, but it has enough substance behind it, not one of the ones that are more transparent. And you can see here, and I'm just going to use uh, black to stamp this down. And you can hit that with D for default and X if you need to switch it. And I'm just going to stamp it right there. Now here's the trick. I am going to pull this up here so you can see a little better. You double click on that layer and go to pattern overlay right here. And you use this pull down and go all the way to the bottom, and it's going to show those papers that I had just created into a pattern. And you can just simply switch between them, and basically it's like clipping a pad a paper to a brush layer, except I can change this a lot easier, and I really like the way it looks. And if you notice, while that dialog is still open too, I can go over here and move it around because it's moving that pattern with it or I can snap it back to origin. Move it around some more so I have showing just exactly what I want. Pretty cool, huh? So now I'm going to add another layer here. No, I'm not. I'm just going to copy the layer um, using the same brush with Control J. And then I'm going to take and move this one down. And it has the same pattern as the previous one. But double click, go back to here, and I can choose a different one now. And see how easy that was? Now I have the two different artsy type of brushwork with my paper that will coordinate with this kit because I made it from one of the papers from the kit. The lighter blue one I didn't. But I'll show you that in a bit why, where I'm going with that train of thought. So now we have this here. So I can move them around above and below each other and I don't have to worry about a clip paper. It's also going to consume a lot less of my file space. And if you're a designer, I am sure you are just light bulb going off 
how you can do things too with your kit. And this is how I make some of my transfers. Okay, so let's go find another brush. And I'm trying to remember her brushes here. Let me pick this one. That might be kind of cool. Maybe. Let's just try it out. Maybe right here. And then I'm going to double click it, pattern overlay, and I can pick another paper. Now, I did pick the same one so they blended in. I could have easily just did a right click on that layer and copy style and paste a style too. And then, that works with brushes great, but let me show you what else it can do here. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pick one of my flag brushes. And these are from Windy Ezine, in case you don't recognize them, for creating banners. Pretty handy here. And I'm going to apply a pattern to this one. I think I'm going to take this, carry some of that blue in. And you can see, and I'm going to add a drop shadow in here. Adjust it, linear burn, and take the distance and the size. Adjust them a little bit. And that looks pretty good to me. So if I want to move that pattern around again, like I said, with that dialog box open, you can move that paper anywhere you want. And you see that line going through there. That's the edge, so it's starting over at the left-hand side of the paper again, which is kind of cool to know. And I just want to find the right spot. I'm not sure. I kind of want this to stand out a little bit. It's called indecisiveness, isn't it? I think I like the darker. And that looks good to me. Pull it up just a tad. Oh, maybe not. There we go. So I have a little bit of the text showing on there, because I like that. So now you see this is all nice and artsy behind it. It almost looks like it's part of the paper, but it's done with simple artsy brushes. And that is a way you can make your layout more artsy if you have some plainer papers, is by utilizing these brushes. And most of our brushes are sold for personal use and commercial use, so it makes this kind of easy. Now I'm going to turn those off because I am going to go in a different direction with this. And adjust these over a little bit just to show a little bit more artsy. Okay, I added a title in here, and you're going to watch my design process again here. Um, but what I've done is I've command clicked on that layer, and I'm going to go to Modify, Expand, and I'm going to take it out 10 pixels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mat for my title work here. Pull it up again so you can see. And while on that layer, I can hit the Command or Control in the new layer, and it puts a layer, a brand new layer, underneath of it. And then I'm going to take my um, fill, my paint bucket, and by holding the Alt key, I can pick colors from my background here. And I'm going to try this out and see if I like it or not. And then I can just simply fill in there inside. And I'm going to zoom so you can see. It's filled right behind. Now, this does have a layer shadow on it. So deselect, Control D. And I'm going to take the shadow, put it on the air. And I'm not sure if I want to leave it there yet, but I'm going to leave it for right now. And then I'm going to go, again, my pattern overlay. Same paper I had before, so it's going to um, really kind of work with all the other papers, since these papers all go together anyway, except for the one, which I really like. So I think I'm going to have to do that. It's spring. I'm in a brighter mood. What can I say? And again, I can move it around easily while the dialog box is open to give me more versatility. And I already know I'm going to change that yellowish matting, probably go white. Um, you could change the scale, too. Oh, completely forgot to tell you that. You can change that scale of that paper to come down. I suggest you don't take it up too much. If you do, only maybe 10%. But you can take it down completely which works really great if you have really large dotted paper and you want to have some small dots. But you can see how that now has that paper in it and that texture, and it's carried right over to the text without having to clip something to it. 
and let's play with this outer glow. I'm really not liking that yellow behind there. Let's try this. Just to touch the size a little bit. And I play with my shadows, even though I have all my own standard shadows. They're kind of a starting point for me. I'm going to change this with my fill to my foreground color. Preserve pants transparency on. Yeah, I think that looks much better. I thought the yellow might, but it didn't. So see, I don't always get it right the first time either. Command zero to zoom all the way back out here. And, hmm, I kind of have something. And I'm not quite sure where I want to go with this title work. Oh, I think, I think I know what I want to do. I think what I want to do is get my other text in place here first. So I'm going to, using my marquee tool, I'm going to select here. And then holding my shift key, I'm going to add to it and try to get as close as possible. And yeah, I do fudge people, see? Oops, I let go too soon. OK, let's try this again. So I'm going to hold here and put that portion in and then maybe to here and then take my shift key holding my shift key and not letting go this time try to take it up as close as possible so that they join and now it's all one and if you see the little box there coming out I can right click and then say make work path so now it's work path and you can't do this in PSE so sorry and then see how it changes on the edge that would follow the edge. But if I go in the center with my text tool, now it's going to type in there, which is way too large. And it's white, so I can't see it. So let's change that. And let's open up my text here and V to get closer. I like to use the um, VT Portable Remington a lot for that typewriter look. Take the size down. And I'm just going to put something in here that just to hold the placement of my text right now so I can see design-wise what it's going to look like and then I can put in my journaling later and just type out here and I'm not good at typing while I'm talking but here let's just do this so I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to go control V control V and paste it just to see how it looks for a placement guide and I do that a lot um, then fill in my journaling later change the size and see if I like it or not always change that and oh, I don't like the way that's spread out so nope definitely not left align it works with the uh, look I have going on here right now and let's see what if I pull this in just a little bit and don't mind my phone um, That's not going to work. I'm too close there. So I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and accept this. Oops, mousy. And then using my arrow keys with the move tool, I'm just going to scooch this over some. OK, and I think I have it where I want. So now I know I want another part to this title. So with the move tool, I'm just going to hold Alt. And I'm going to pull this up here. And this is another beauty thing about having the pattern. I can modify this text. And it's still going to have that pattern of that paper behind there. But of course, I still have to build another mat behind the new text since it is different. So command click on there to select that text. Go up here and select and modify. And it's already. Um, I'm going to expand. It's already expanded by 10 for my last one. And then Command click to get a layer under. And then fill with my color underneath of that. So I'm going to apply a shadow. See, now you can see how that pattern is on both, top of both of those texts. And they are the same. And I didn't have to clip another paper to it or anything else. And after playing around some more, and I even changed uh, the pattern to a linear burn I kind of found what I wanted I wanted to pull some of that green in I put in my journaling changed its color and then did a little play with some text around the other side of it here and I came out with a really great page that used some artsy brushes 
use some pat the papers as a pattern not only on the brushwork but the flag and the text and I mean the sky's the limit here you could do it on shapes and other brushes or even on top of elements that have a really good shape to it but you don't care for the element maybe the color or whatever it is but it's got a nice shape to it I mean the sky's the limit where you can make really beautiful papers work 20 million times harder for you and then with a good repertoire of you know brushes and shapes and things like that you can really extend your stash and get a lot of bang for your buck on just a set of papers alone even and it's great for using when you have kits that just don't have the right things in them or you just want to pull in something else from another kit but you can use the papers from that first kit along with to create this kind of stuff with so I hope I gave you some great ideas for you to experiment with and remember it's all about the play and as you see I do like to play so till next time take care